Okay, so let's go over a few armature basics. So I've got this cube selected. I'm going to tap W, increase the subsurf level. I'm going to hit S to scale and tap my middle mouse button to constrain it to the X axis like this and pull it out. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode, shift W to do a loop cut and slide, and then scroll up my mouse wheel a couple times to get about six or seven cuts in there. Doesn't matter, doesn't have to be specific. Okay, so I'm going to hit tab to go out of edit mode and hit one to go into front view, and my 3D cursor is already in the center of this hot dog looking shaped thing so now I'm going to tap shift A and under armature add a single bone. Now if I zoom up, zoom up on here you can see that the armature bone is uh, sticking out a little bit but you can't really see it. If I tap Z to go into wireframe view you see it in there. Go back to solid shading can't really see it. So if we go over to our immediate object properties over here which this side displays the object properties of whatever we have selected when we turn on x-ray then we can see our little bone there then I'm gonna tap R to rotate it hold control to constrain it so that I can rotate it exactly flat like that I'm gonna hit S to scale and we can see a little better I'll hit G to grab middle mouse to constrain and I just want to move it to the end right here the way we add more of these bones so that we're creating an armature is we go into edit mode after selecting it and you'll see there are three different things we can really select. If we select the meat of the bone, the, the main uh, piece there, it will select all three items, or we can select the individual joints uh, there. Because what we kind of want to do is create a simple little bone rig for this cylinder-shaped object we've created so that we can bend it and move it around. And to do that, we just need to select the head of it right there and hit E to extrude it and we'll extrude it a couple of times here and just extrude it out to the end like that. So how do I move the bone around? When you have an armature object created and selected you'll have a new option here for pose mode. In pose mode you can grab and move these bones. So you see as I, as I grab one down here it, it moves the uh, bones connected farther down to it and you see the uh, order of operation in which they're parented in the order of which you uh, extruded them out. So if I want to reset the position of all of these bones I just moved, maybe I'm testing a position out or something, I can tap A to select all and then tap Alt R and that will reset the rotation and the position of your armature in Sensei format. If ever you panic and you move something that you want to move back to its original position, just tap A to select all the bones and Alt-R and resets everything. Okay, so currently our little armature we created can move itself, but it, it's not able to move our little sausage thing here. So the way in which we get it to do that is we parent the mesh object we created, which is just called cube, let's rename it, let's go ahead and call it sausage, I guess. We have to parent that to the actual armature. So I'm going to select this armature and hit A to select all and then Alt R to reset it. To parent it, we can select the, the sausage object and then shift select the armature and we can go to changes to object mode and we can go to object, parent, with automatic weights would give us the results we wanted. Or, but there's a much simpler way we can also parent that object. You can simply parent it to the armature by just selecting its icon next to its name and bringing that up and dropping it onto the armature. And then you want to select with automatic weights. And now if I hit the plus sign next to that armature, you'll see that the sausage object is inside of it. Now there seems to be some kind of bug with this version of Blender where when you pick up an object to parent it or move it, the object you're dragging appears a little higher than where you picked it up, but if you'll just select via the icon and, and move the mouse towards the object you want to parent it to, you'll see that object light up there and you'll know that you're parenting it uh, to the object you want. Okay, so now if we select this armature object that we created and we change it from object mode to pose mode 
and we select this end bone here and I hit G to grab, you'll see that it is now deforming or moving that base object here. But there's kind of an issue. If you look at the edges, you'll see that there's some strange kind of bending here that we don't really want. And the reason that is, is that on this mesh object here, this sausage object, we have now a modifier that was applied to it automatically when we parented it to the armature, which is this armature modifier. And whenever you're creating a bone rig for a character or a cat or a tail or a dragon or anything you're creating it for, you typically always want your armature modifier at the very top of the stack of your object. So we're going to use these arrows to bump this armature modifier to the very top of the stack for our sausage object and you'll see that that now takes away those weird looking indentions there. So if I grab this bone, I hit G to grab, G to grab or uh, R to rotate, you'll see that it's bending much more smoothly. And then of course I can tap A to select all my bones, hit Alt R to reset them and I'm back to where I was. A really cool quick feature for using the bone rig you create in pose mode is uh, auto inverse kinematics. And if you're unfamiliar with inverse kinematics, basically what they allow you to do is give full rotation and transformation functionality in reverse order to all your bones. So if I hit T to bring up the R tools while we're in pose mode, it won't show up there if you're not in pose mode, but if you're in pose mode and hit T, you'll get the option for auto IK. So we'll check mark that. I'll hit T to dismiss the tool shelf. Now if I grab this, you'll see it moves all the way back in relationship to uh, each of these bones. I'm going to go ahead and change the display of this uh, armature here from octahedral, which, is these, which are these octahedral shapes, to wire because it's a little easier to see. So we can still select on each bone we need to select. It's just in, appears as a wire, so it's not uh, so taking up so much room. So I'm going to tap A to select all my bones here and hit Alt R to reset them. I'm going to go ahead and switch the display of the bone shapes from wire back to octahedral. If I want to separate the bones from the object, say I, I, I want to do some more work on it and then, and then put it back on there later, I can just hit the plus sign on my armature and I can drag my object, which the bones are attached to, I can just drag that out from that and it will unparent this object from the bones. So now if we click on this bones and we hit G to grab, you'll see that it's just moving the, uh, the armature structure itself. So I'm going to hit Control Z for that. And so now I'm going to select this so-called sausage object and hit Tab to go into edit mode. What if we wanted to extend this little armature rig we created? Well, we can do that very easily. Now that we've unparented it, say I select a face here and another face here. Shift select that face. I'm going to hit E to extrude. E to extrude again. E to extrude again. E to extrude again. And E to extrude again. To extend this armature, what I would do is hit Tab to go back in object mode. Select the this armature structure and then hit tab to go into edit mode for it. So I'm going to hit 5 to go into top view and zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to hit G to grab this joint point and move it in the middle. Grab it and move it over here. And I'll grab this one and move it over here so that I can extend both of these bones down here and we'll have a new kind of crazy wobbly armature object. I'll select that point and shift select that one. Hit E to extrude both of those tap down my middle mouse button to constrain it once I extrude it and E again and E again. Okay so if I hit tab that sends me back into pose mode when I'm working with a uh, an armature object. If I select a bone here and hit G to grab we still have the auto IK on which is uh, why moving just one of these bones allows it to react to all these other bones but we're no longer moving our sausage object, which we should probably change the name of that now because it doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to change it from sausage to, I don't know, weird dog thing, I guess. Hit enter. And I'll select my armature object. I'm going to hit A to select all and then hit Alt R to reset that position. Now I want to parent my weird dog thing 
back to this armature such that it will be controlling it. So I'm going to hit the minus button by the armature so I don't have to look at all that other stuff. And I'm going to drag the icon by the weird dog thing and uh, move my mouse to where it lights up the little armature icon and drop it on there and choose to uh, set parent with automatic weights. And now when I select one of these bones and grab it, you'll see that it is moving our crazy object. Now once again, you'll see it's doing that weird, no good, gross kind of deformation there. And that's because the, the armature object is deforming on top of our subsurf modifier. And to fix that, once again, we just select our weird dog thing object and we go ahead and make sure that the armature modifier that was added automatically when we parented it to the armature, we make sure we bump that up underneath the the subdivision surface modifier and now when we grab any one of these bones move our weird creation thing around we see that it, it moves uh, in a way in which we might expect it to so that's a uh, basic armatures and I just wanted to give you a little bit of a foundation in what's actually going on here and a quick simple way that you could I don't know animate a cat's tail or a, or a dragon paw or something like that so you don't really need a huge, massive library of understanding to be able to use armature and bone rigging tools. So hopefully that was a good help, and next we'll be doing a simple character rig.